Welcome to Labor Day weekend at Life Stream Church. Can we all stand up? We like to say welcome home. We like to welcome all those watching on YouTube and Facebook today. It's good to see all of you that we can't see and all of you that we can see. Uh, I don't know about you, but I get excited about coming to worship God and seeing my family here, my spiritual family, so it's, it's good to see everybody. Hey, we just want to... Uh, join our hearts together and uh, think vertically for a little bit and let's focus on the Lord and hear what the Lord has to say to the church today. Are you in? Yeah. All right. Let's give God some praise.
for mine Nailed to the cross You crucified Now all my sin and shame Is washed by your mercy You are the treasure I find No reason for living To let my
Continue in worship. Father, we come to you this morning, God. We just pray that we can give you everything. God, we pray that you would accept our offering this morning. God, we pray, Lord, that you would give us the courage and the strength to let go. Father, that you would be there. Lord, we know you are there, Lord. Help us to help us to have the courage to just let it go. Lord, that we can we can drop off the weight that the world tries to stack on top of us. Thank you, God, for who you are. Sing it out, that's beautiful. This is a house of healing. Our hearts are full of faith. You have our full attention. You have the final say. So we say, to come alive in the name of Jesus, come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Yes, it is. And we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come on, where do you believe in God for this morning? Let's worship Him. Worship Him like it's already been answered. Worship Him like the, pr the prayer that you've been praying, the very desire of your heart. You already have it. But there's resurrection power. Yes, there's resurrection power. Your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over. the coldest grave. We say to come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We declare everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house
Let's make a declaration. This is a house of miracles. Everything in the feet of Jesus. Everything in the feet of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to release miracles today. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you release your Holy Spirit on your people today. Touch hearts and touch lives. Lord, we thank you for a release of miracles. believe today that there may be that word come alive keeps jumping out at me come alive in Jesus name come alive let me hear you say it. come alive in Jesus name come alive in Jesus name I believe there may be some dead things in your life it may be a relationship with a spouse it may be a relationship with some kids or some grandkids it may be uh, finances it may be whatever it is in your life maybe it's a it's a wound you've been carrying around for a while but God is the one who can resurrect and turn dead things into life hallelujah so God we just speak over every dead thing that is in our lives Lord those lost relatives Lord those lost spouses those lost things Lord that that you you, you spent so much time in the gospel saying they were so important that you spoke parables about them and that and that you're the shepherd who will leave the 99 to go get that one lost sheep. So, Father, we just reach out and we ask for a release right now in Jesus' name. We say in Jesus' name. We declare in Jesus' name. And we receive, Lord, your healing. We receive, Lord, your resurrection. Lord, we receive your life. And we speak life and the life that you came to give abundantly in these things and we pray resurrection power in the mighty name of Jesus we give you praise and honor and glory this morning come on church let's give God some worship this morning amen amen hey give your neighbor a hug a handshake a high five knuckles whatever you do as you're seated this morning amen amen Amen. You know, if the, hallelujah, hey, you know, it's, you know, it's church when somebody spills something. Praise God, man. We've, we're having church today. We're having church. Amen. Hey, man, we've, how many of you feel the presence of God? It's so strong in here. It's so strong in here right now. And I believe God is here to do something today. I believe God is here to do something powerful. I was thinking, though, this morning, as I was thinking, when you think of the word worship, who comes to your mind in the Bible? Anybody want to shout out a name? David. Most of you said David. Me too. Because God said, this guy is a man after my own heart. And so I started thinking about, well, how would I define what worship is? And if I went around the room today, we might get, you know, hundreds of different answers, you know, because uh, worship is something very personal to each and every person as as we but we know it's directed towards God but to me the way I explain worship is it's love expressed that cost me something so like for instance today you guys 
and I thank you so much. You gave up your time that you could have chosen to do something else, but you gave up your time to God to come and worship in his house. It cost you your time today. Can, is it, I mean, can you just give yourselves a hand of praise? I mean, it's okay. And, and then others of you, like the musicians and singers, and there are people teaching children back there and doing things for the church, they gave up their talent. They gave up part of their talent today. Can we give them a hand of praise this morning? Others of you that, that came here today and you gave up your time and you raised your hands in worship, you just gave up your pride. It cost you your pride. Right? Oh, am I mingling now? I don't mean to be mingling. But, you know, I, I mean, because I used to have a problem when I was younger with that, like, what will people think of me? And then God just dealt with me about pride and, like, well, wh why not? You know, one day I'll be doing this in heaven, so I might as well have a little heaven on earth. Amen? Amen. And so we give up our pride. Some of you maybe give up a fear. Remember the first time you ever went to church, you might have been scared to death. Like, I don't know all these people. But now you've come to know a great family. And then, to me, one of the highest forms of worship is to give up something that costs us something, part of our wages and part of our earning. And so this morning... We're going to receive an offering. We're going to give an offering to God if the ushers can come forward and prepare this morning as we uh, give to the Lord. And, and David understood this. Ga David gave not only his heart, but his time, his talent, and, uh, and his, his earnings. So, Zeke, you figured out where to go? There's an opening over here. Oh, you're two in the middle. Okay. Okay. My bad. These guys got it organized, and I just, uh, I just let them do. So... Let, let's pray a blessing as you, as you pass the bucket. Father, we thank you for each and every one that's here today. And, Lord, we just want to worship you with one of the highest forms of worship, something that costs us a part of our earnings. We give it to you. We do it gladly and cheerfully. We rejoice before the Lord in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. amen. So let me just share a little bit about what's going on at the church. We have some exciting things. One thing I'm excited about is next week. Can everybody say next week? Next week. We have what we call Rally Day. It's where we're going to introduce you to all of our small groups. And small groups is another way to worship God. Because um, I can't tell you how many times that someone has had a need or something personal going on in their life, and the small group stepped up to pray for them and minister to them and be with them. It happens all the time here at Life Spring, And I'm so thankful for all the small group leaders and all the small groups that are at Life Spring Church. Let's give them a hand of praise this morning. Amen. And uh, also, uh, one of the small groups uh, is the merge group who Robert and Danielle have this morning, and they are going to have an activity not this Monday, but next Friday. <laughs> I said Monday. Not this Friday, but next Friday, right? The 8th, September the 8th. It's this Friday. Sorry. This Friday. I'll get it together. I'm just the pastor. I don't know what's going on. This Friday, they're having a cornhole tournament. So, you guys, uh, all you cornholers out there, y'all get ready to come and throw that bean bag and have some fun with Robert and Danielle. All right, well, I'm going to move out of the way and give Robert plenty of time because he's one of our longest speakers <laughs> that we have. Will you give a big hand of praise to Robert Box this morning as he shares with you what God's put on his heart? I love this family. I love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tip you later. <laughs> All right. Woo. So today we're actually going to talk about miracles. It's crazy that we were singing about it, like almost like God had something planned, or me and Danny had something planned. Just, <laughs> he scheduled the music, so I told him what I was, what I was speaking on. He's like, I have, I have amazing songs that's going to set the atmosphere for this place. So today we want to set the atmosphere of miracles today. So today we're actually going to talk about the great ceiling fan, and I'll, I'll get to that one in a second. You didn't know there were ceiling fans in the Bible, did you? Huh? We're going to talk about it. But we're going to talk about miracles. What's, what's, the, uh, what's the greatest miracle that you can think of outside the resurrection that was done for one person? Speak up, I can't hear. The, red, the parting of the Red Sea? 
Anybody else? So Jesus has recorded 42 different miracles through, through the, the New Testament. And so some of them, like the widow's son being revived, the, the, the dead son being revived, um, the paralyzed man at the pool. There's a bunch of different miracles. So we're going to actually go over two different miracles. One is something about coming alive. Someone's, someone's skin, actually we're talking about the leper whose skin came back to life. A physical healing who came back to life. And uh, first I want to start out, what's a miracle? What's the definition of a miracle? A miracle is an event that appears inexplicable by the laws of nature, and so it, so it is held as supernatural in, or, in origin or an act of God. So that's, that's what we, we want to define a miracle as, an act of God. It's something that God had his hand on and something happened. So we're going to get into Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. Anybody want to read? I don't mind. Anybody want to read? I like to have a little fun. You want to read? Absolutely. Go ahead. In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his head, with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But despite Jesus' instructions, the report of his power spread even faster, and vast crowds came to hear him preach and to be healed of their diseases. But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. So, how many of us have come to Jesus with that, that prayer just of, Lord, if you're willing to heal me, please heal me? Yeah. Just a humble prayer to say, God, if you're willing, I know you've got all this other stuff going on, but I'm not worthy, but if you're willing to, please heal me. I have. I've been there. I've done a lot of that stuff. But we're going to talk about another miracle where, where almost, it was almost demanding of, of, of a miracle. Where they said, God, I have to have a miracle. This is something that we're just going to have to do. And coming alive. Speaking of coming alive. Everybody know what leprosy is? Where your skin literally just dies and rots away. So what did it do to that man? Came back to life. His skin literally came back to life. Amen. It was a physical healing of coming back to life. Yes. One, of the great, one of the great miracles, amazing thing. And then he had to go and, and show an offering to the priest. He had to, he had to go and say, okay, I, you knew I was a leper. Like they had his own colony, this own setup. With, he was part of leper. So he had to go to the priest to show him, I'm cleansed. I'm healed. I am new. I'm set free. Yes. But that miracle died. That physical miracle, when he died, his skin died with him. So I want to talk about another miracle that's going to be, that as a last forever. <clears throat> or how happy, how happy do you think that man was with leprosy? Yeah. Yeah. Changed his life forever, right? Yeah. Go and tell everybody about Jesus. So now we're going to get into the ceiling fan miracle. <laughs> My wife told me I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it anyways. I've been practicing this all week, all right? All right, I'm going to do my impression of a ceiling fan. You want to see it? Yeah. All right, hold on. Hold on. Let's make a little room. All right, here we go. All right. oh, yeah. Go ceiling! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I know it's a bad joke, but I still like it. It made me laugh. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the ceiling fan. And the story of the ceiling fan is found in Luke chapter 5 verse 17 through 26. And this is the message, this is the, the, the story of the paralyzed man whose friends had so much faith in what Jesus could do that they picked him up, they couldn't get through the crowd, so what do they do? They tore a hole in the roof. Now as a roofer, I'm a little mad that they tore a hole in the roof, but that's all right. They tore a hole in the roof and they dropped this man down in front of him and said, he needs a miracle today. Yeah. Not, not, not the prayer of, if you're willing, yeah. but... This is almost a demanding, get him a miracle today. Yeah. 
And he not only got one miracle of a physical healing, but he got a spiritual healing, yeah. which is the greater miracle of them all. Yes. And we're going to talk about that, and we're going to break it down. Amy, you want to you read? One day while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. And the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. They tried to take him inside to Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. Then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, young man, your sins are forgiven. Okay, we're going to hold right there. So, so what's, what do you think that, that man's first thought was? I mean, he's paralyzed, man, and he's coming before Jesus and thinking of a completely different miracle. Exactly. This man is going to heal me exactly. of, from being paralyzed. Yes. But what does he do? He, he forgives his sins. Yes. Now, now, there's kind of a, I've, I've listened to a bunch of different people, and they're like, thoughts about what that man was thinking in that moment. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I, 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 need, to be par I need to be healed from my, 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 in, my, my physical appearance. Right. You know, that's, that's not what I, what I want. That's not the miracle that I want. Right. But in my mind, and I've been set free, and I've had a moment where, where God touched me so much that it like, felt like a, a thousand bricks were lifted off my chest. Yeah. And I think that man was so happy at that moment that he would have no problem lived the rest of his life paralyzed knowing that he is set free yes. for eternity. Yeah. His sins were forgiven for eternity. Yes. So let's keep, keep going. <clears throat> but the Pharisees and teachers of religious law said to themselves, who does he think he is? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And immediately, as everyone watched, the man jumped up, picked up his mat, and went home praising God. Everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe, and they praised God, exclaiming, We have seen amazing things today. Amen. So, how many of us just get focused on the physical stuff every day. I, I, you know, the physical uh, realities of life. And that's what they were focused on. They saw the miracle of the outside, but the greater miracle was what happened on the inside. And so we always pray for these healings, and, and don't get me wrong, healings are great, and they are amazing things, but the greatest miracle of all is what happens in our hearts. Yeah. It's the forgiveness of our sins, it's the freedom, it's the setting free. That's why, that's why we find freedom here at this church. It's because yeah. it's the greatest miracle we could ever have. Yeah. That man's leg quit working when he died. That man's arms quit working when he died. That physical healing that he received stopped. And then he got to praise Jesus in heaven with him because he was set free for eternity, yeah. not just here on earth. Yeah. <clears throat> now, which was, I, need to say that, I put it here, which was the greater miracle, the physical or the spiritual? It's the spiritual. Absolutely. But... The physical gave him the ability to talk about the spiritual. Yeah. The physical healing that he got yeah. made him so much, so, so that other people could see it, that he could tell them about what changed inside. Yeah. He said, look, look, look at my outside has changed, but my inside has also changed. Yeah. And that's the testimony that we could have, all of us could have today, is that changing of the, of the heart and tell people, yes, yes, I used to be this, but now I'm this, yeah. because God set me free. <clears throat> his sins were forgiven but he was walking <clears throat> why did Jesus give that man two miracles very few I, I haven't found any other spot in the Bible where Jesus gives one person two miracles I think he's just the luckiest guy in the world <laughs> or to be honest because it was set forth he was put in that place to be given that so that it could show everybody God's power. Yeah. And, it, and, and then, what did he do with it? I hope that he went out and shouting Jesus' name yeah. from the rooftops. Yeah. So this, you know, maybe he takes them back to that house and look, 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 this is the hole that they tore in the roof 
where I got my healing. This is where it went. This is the house, you know, and he took people on tours, you know, to change their lives. Because what, why does God give us these miracles? It's to tell other people. It's to set other people free, to look at them, to, to the great commandment. Go and tell all the people. Go and make disciples. You know, that's what we're here to do. <clears throat> Reasons why. I'm, I'm wrapping up. We may be short today, but that's all right. So am I. It's good. <laughs> <clears throat> it says he forgave his sins to change the man inside but no one could see that change yeah. you can't see that change on the inside until other parts of your life has changed until the outside but the greater miracle was the inside healing we can be set free <clears throat> I, went, I already went into my other point he, he healed the outside so to show the haters that he could heal man physically also just to show the Pharisees that he has the power to forgive sins, but he also has the power to forgive, to, to heal them, to, to set the body free. <clears throat> and the last point, I just wanted to put three points in here because Rex always tells me I don't put three points in my message. So, <laughs> bam! I got three points. They're not very long, but hey. <laughs> I pick on Rex. because Rex, Rex used to put me on holiday weekends a lot. Well, pretty much I still do. Because a lot of times, churches aren't known for having packed houses. But you guys showed him. Y'all packed the house out today to come see me. Thank you. We truly love you guys. And I always give, give Rex, a, you know, we, we, we tease each other a lot. So I get to do that. <clears throat> so in ending with this, the message about this miracles, something that I, I didn't even have it in my message. But Rex, taught, uh, Rex was saying about something coming alive. If you are here and you're dealing with addiction, I want to come forward and pray with you. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> if you want to stand in for someone who has addiction, they can be set free today. They can come alive in Jesus' name. They will be set free because this is a house of miracles. This is the place that the greatest miracle in the Bible can still happen today. Amen. God bless you. I love you, Rex. Uh, oh, please come forward if you want to. If you want to pray, if you love this guy, don't you? <laughs> and I just have to say, Pastor Robert, even the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit is three parts in one. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, can we all just stand to our feet here this morning and? My wife also has a wonderful word um, that, do you want to share that right now? Can you guys just continue to flow in this? Pastor Robert, you can stay up here. You can stay here. God's really been speaking to me about our church, and um, I feel like it goes right along with your message, so I feel like maybe today's the time to share it. But this is what he's been challenging me in, a bunch of different areas. Are we a church that prays or are we a praying church? Are we a church that worships or are we a worshiping church? Are we a church that has miracles or are we a, is this a place of miracles? You see the difference? There's a big difference there. And I believe the difference there is it's in the pressing in. It's not just coming and attending and saying a prayer. It's coming from our heart. It's coming from a place of God, like he was talking this morning about, God, I need you. I need you in this moment. All of us need him. Every minute of every day, whether we realize it or not, we don't do anything in our own strength. We don't do anything that God does not give us the ability to do. We need to recognize that. We need to acknowledge that. We think the things that we do and the things that we have are because of us, and they're not. The children that we have are because God gave them to us. The spouse that we have is because God gave that spouse to us. God has placed each and every one of us here, and it's my heart's desire that this house is not just a place where people come to worship, but that it's worship we're a worshiping church we're not just going to worship on sundays but we worship 24 7 so therefore we are a worshiping church 
We're not just a church that worships. On Sunday mornings at 9.30, whenever we have prayer in the lobby, that's a church that prays. But we need to be a praying church that comes together and prays or even prays and intercedes on behalf of our brothers and sisters here in this body. I'm telling you, church, if we will do that, if we can grab a hold of that and really press in, make ourselves a little vulnerable, make ourselves a little bit uncomfortable, step out of our box, step out of us into the fullness of who he is, we'll see miracles. And not just every once in a while. This will be a house of miracles. This will be a place of praise. <laughs> because our hearts are in tune with God's heart. It's not about us. It's about my brother. It's about Robert, it's about Danielle, it's about their family. Every one of us in here, we all go through stuff, but it's not about the stuff. It's about exalting God through the stuff. <laughs> it's about letting God into your stuff. We don't have to fix stuff and then go to God. Let God into your stuff, whatever your stuff is. Come on church, let's be a worshiping church, not a church that just worships on Sunday. Let's be a praising church and not just a church that praises on Sunday. Let's make it a way of life. Let's come into this place. Come on. Let's come into this place and let's be ready for God to move. Let's have hearts that are so stirred that we're ready to see God move in this place. Maybe not on our behalf, but on the behalf of someone next to us. Sometimes it's a sacrifice of praise to come in and to worship God. It costs you something. It costs you something. But I can promise you, whatever it is you give to God, He gives you more back. He gives you more back. I want this place to be a place of worship. I want this place to be a place of praise. I want us to be a house of miracles. Our living body, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. We can speak to our body. I, re I related so much to what you were saying because with my back stuff, earlier this year at the first I started off with God you know if it's your will I really wish this pain would stop <laughs> but then it progresses to the point where I'm looking at Rex every morning with tears running down my cheek going God please make it stop please make it stop and he did y'all he's faithful he's faithful we go through storms but he's with us stay worshiping stay praising stay praying don't ever cease. Don't ever stop. Make it who you are, not just what you do. Amen. Good word. Good word. Hey, I, I, I just want to piggyback off of that right there. And I just want to say right now, I just feel like there's more than one person today that may need a miracle in your life. And, and God is ready to release and flow. And, and he's in the miracle working business. And like she said, it, it, it will cost us something. I'm not talking about money. You can't right. buy a miracle. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about every person in the Bible that received a miracle, it cost them something. You know what it was? It was an act of faith. So I'm going to ask you right now, if you need a miracle in your life, if you need a miracle in your family, if you need a miracle in anything, I want you just to step out as an act of faith and come down here in the front. Just come on out. Come on out. If you have if you have pain in your body, if you have pain in your spirit, if you have pain in your emotions, if you have pain that you're carrying around, you know, pain is a wonderful thing that God created. As she was talking about pain, pain alerted her there's something wrong in your body. And because of that pain, we were able to pray specifically and with the help of doctors and medicine and in, act, and in faith, God healed her of her pain. And God wants to heal you of your pain in the marriage, in your relationship with your children, in your emotional pain, in your spiritual pain. Maybe you have pain mentally. Maybe you're being tormented with thoughts and, and bad thoughts. But God, God wants to heal that right? God wants to take that away. And so as, as God speaks to you, just come and, and step out here and we're going to say a prayer over everyone here that has stepped out. 
And I believe, I believe that God is going to release, 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 release miracles on your life. Do you believe with me? Because Jesus said, if you just ask anything in his name, and then he gave an example. He said, you can even say to that mountain, and I want you to think about what's that mountain in your life? What's that mountain right now? Is it a, is it a mountain of a relationship? Is it a mountain of a financial problem? Is it a mountain of needing a job? Is it a mountain of you need peace? Is it a mountain of you need to get rid of some fear of whatever it is? It's a mountain in your life. And Jesus said, if you ask, believing in his name, say to that mountain, move, move out, and it will be done. You believe that this morning? That's the Word of God. That's the Word of God. And the same God that did miracles in Genesis, that did miracles in the Old Testament, that did miracles like Pastor Robert was talking about in Jesus' time, that did miracles after Jesus in the book of Acts, that did miracles even into the book of Revelation, that same God is still doing miracles today. And we can either say, God, I want to be a part of that, or God, I just don't believe in that. But if you say, God, I want to be a part of that today, just begin to worship God. You know, one of the miracles in the Bible I think of is Jesus healed 10 lepers, and one of them came back and thanked him. Can you just thank God right now for moving the mountain? Can you just thank God in an act of faith and say, God, I thank you that you're moving this mountain. I agree with you in Jesus' name. Father, we just lift our hands. Father, we just release our pride. We release our fear. We release whatever it is that's keeping this miracle from us. We come against the enemy in the name of Jesus. We declare spiritual warfare on the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we bind the power of the enemy and we remove it from our life in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare the blood of Jesus. We declare the name of Jesus, and we agree in Jesus. We come in harmony and in symphony with Jesus right now. And God, we ask in the name of Jesus, move these mountains out of our lives. Move these mountains out of the way. Father, we just speak life. Lord, we speak you are the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in you shall have eternal life. We thank you for that greatest miracle, and we receive that greatest miracle. If there's anyone that needs that miracle right now, just receive that miracle of eternal life and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and say, I receive you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I receive you. I believe in you, and I confess you as my Lord and Savior. For those that are in here that need a miracle in their life, in their family, Lord, we ask for a release in Jesus' name. Release in Jesus' name, release peace. We take out all confusion out of people's minds in the name of Jesus. A lack of peace in their spirit, we take that out. Any fear, we take that out. Any pride, we take that out. And we humble ourselves before you today, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that your word says, humble yourselves and resist the enemy, and he will flee from you. So we thank you that we're making the enemy run, and we just receive your miracle. Lord, we act in faith. We step out and believe with you, Jesus. You are the Son of God, and you have the power to change anything, and you can change this in our life. We thank you in advance, just like the one leper did. We come back to you right now in Jesus' name, and we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just sing that song again? Can we just, I know Amy's not here, but I, I can lead it if you put the words up for me. I'm not real good with words. Or Michelle can lead it. There it is. Come on, let's just worship God. Just take time and thank Him for your miracle right now. I still believe. I still believe. I still Come on, just believe. worship God this morning. Thank Him. God, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All things All things. All things. I yes. God, I receive your vision. God, I believe.
receive your vision, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the miracles. Thank you, Lord. You're Lord. Yes, Lord, you're moving mountains. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To the feet of Jesus. Jesus. We lay it down, Lord. In the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We can't do it on our own strength, but you can do it, Lord. Come alive. Come alive. In the name of Jesus. Come alive. Through the blood of Jesus. Through the power of Jesus. How about as an act of faith, we give God the biggest hand of praise and thank Him for all the miracles that were released. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor Robert, come on back up here. And as it, I just want Pastor Robert to pray a, a blessing over you as you leave today to go back with your families. Next week, there's a great new series being launched. Feel free to stay and pray, to stay in this atmosphere. You don't have to leave, but I want to ask Pastor Robert to to bless you as you as you go today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you today and thank you. Thank you for the miracles that you release today in our lives, Lord. We thank you for the hearts that are set free today in Jesus' name, Lord. We pray that, that we can go out and tell someone about you this week, this month, this year. We can tell multiple people about our testimony of what you've done in our lives, Lord God. Lord, I just pray that will you give us boldness to stand in front of people and say, Jesus. In Jesus' name, I am set free. I am free today, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name.